Howdy everyone, this is Mopot, this is Redstone the World, and welcome to episode number one. In this series, we'll be looking at redstone mechanics and applying them to real world situations. We'll also be analyzing them at a fairly in-depth level. So if you're looking to gain a deeper understanding of redstone, then you've come to the right place. Backing up a couple of weeks to when I released my Blackjack in Minecraft showcase, feedback on this video showed me that you guys are intrigued by the inner workings of this build. So to start the series, we're going to be updating this design, and I'm going to show you exactly how each component functions. Now let's dig in. Maintaining pretty much all of the original rules of Blackjack, we are just going to make a couple small changes to make the design just a little bit easier to build out of redstone. First, the player will always bet exactly one token. Second, if a player draws two of the same value card, they will not be given the option to split. And third, the game will run with one deck and that will be shuffled after each hand. Now let's build our deck. And looking at the deck here, you can see that we have all four suits going this way and all 13 ranks going down that way, which is pretty neat. That is done with a texture pack onto a carved pumpkin. We'll get to that in a moment here, but let's quick take a look at why this is important. If we jump into spectator mode here, you can see that these are invisible armor stands and the carved pumpkins that are retextured are actually just sitting on their heads. And that's pretty important because although we could have used banners, we can now come over here and do something like this where we have a dispenser. We put the carved pumpkin that is now a card on in there hit the button and it gets dispensed onto the armor stand so that the player can actually see it and I've got this cool mod which adds this interface which lets me turn this invisible we could do that with commands but I did just kind of make it a little bit simpler for myself with the use of that awesome mod but there you go there's your floating card and here's how that card was made we just loaded up block bench slapped in a cube resized it to be the size of a playing card and then added a white background and the letter or number in the right color for the suit that it represents block bench then gave me a file like this that has the display logic for each card in the deck then I just had to come through here and match each of the custom model data numbers to the model that it corresponds to. So then back in game here, we can take a carved pumpkin and we can run a trigger command for custom model data. We can set this to one. This is a data pack that I have added that lets me quickly change this without having to do too many crazy stuff. But you can see there is our ace of spades by changing it to one and we can do this for all of them. So for instance, two then is the two of spades and so forth all the way up to 52, which is the last card in the deck, which is the king of hearts. So with that all sorted out now, let's go ahead and build the shuffler. So the shuffler is going to rely on a pretty important mechanic here which is that this hopper is locked as long as this torch is powered but we can very quickly unpower and then repower that torch to just send a single item through here so if we hit this really fast you probably didn't even really see it but there is a very quick blip here where that is going to toggle. And if we come on through here, we can put a stack of white wall in there. And then we should see just one item at a time get pumped into this chest when we hit that button. So for the first one, there we go. We come over here, there's one item. We do it again, we hit that button. We come over here, there's two items. And we can just continue doing that in order to draw cards. And the beautiful thing about that setup then is that we can stack a bunch of minecart with chests on top of that hopper. And then when we hit that, the pulse is going to pull one random item out of here. It's going to pick a random minecart with chest and pull that item straight out of there. So we put one card in each chest and then we stack them all up and that's going to work pretty good. I did have to add one extra hopper down below because this is locking so fast. It doesn't actually have time to then pump the item back through. So we instead put one more hopper below it to just pull that item out of that locked hopper. So let's get rid of that minecart with chest right there. Let's go ahead and add three more, one with a piece of blue blue wool, one with a piece of red wool, one with a piece of a green wool, and then let's go ahead and hit that button and see which item we get out. So there we go. Come on down here. We get red wool first. We can hit the button again. We're then going to get blue wool, and then we're going to hit the button again, and we are going to get green. So in this case, it was red, then blue, then green, and we can repeat this test. We hit the button. We then get the red first. Then we come over here and we get the green next. And then finally we get the blue last. So now that we know we can pick a card out of a minecart with chest, we're gonna need a way to put the cards back in because each chest must contain exactly one card. So on the way back through, we're gonna need a separate set of chests. We can't have them all stacked back on top of each other. And this neat little contraption here, if I add some minecart with chests onto this, is going to do exactly that. So we hit the button, we send them off, and it's gonna start splitting them up. So there goes one, two, three, four, five. I don't remember how many times I clicked it but there goes a six chest so now they're all separate which means from then we can start to load each one individually and now with the cards coming off of here we can collect them down below and we're gonna be holding them right on this rail notice how that is off temporarily when we run a chest over this hopper down here it's gonna take the card out of it if there is one in it and hold it right in this hopper on the end or all of the cards are getting shuffled back into the deck will also be right there so as long as there's a card available to distribute back into a chest then this comparator will turn on power that rail and then it will continue down the line pick up that card 
and then keep on going and it is timed pretty well so that only one card will ever get in there we're not going to get two cards in a single chest so that is nothing that we have to worry about it gets shot right back up then and put right back into the deck here and we do have a detector rail on top because we don't want to use the default timing of the machine where it's just constantly spinning out items at a regular interval we want to wait until that chest gets a card and then we can ask for the next one by linking that up to this rail here so pretty straightforward connection i think here we have the detector rail it hits that redstone line into a monostable circuit and then the repeaters are going to slow that pulse down so that the piston fires at the right time and then around here we did just simplify the observers into just a single redstone dust and a repeater into the piston just like that so now we come on over here i did rotate the drawing mechanism around because it was in our way before so now if we hit the button right here it's going to go ahead and draw an item out of here i have five chests and they each have a piece of white wool in there so i just hit the one to draw that first white wall if i hit it again we should get a second one down here and then when we shuffle these back into the deck they are going to end up in this hopper right here so we go ahead and do that and then we come over here and send our deck off to be shuffled so the first one goes through it's going to come on up here if we click on that fast enough we'll see that we do have one in there and one in there and we should have one in here that's pretty good and now the last two here that one is good and the final one is good as well i think i just barely caught it before it fell there so you can see that that system is fully working for comparison to our original design this is the size of the original card shuffler so i'd say we condensed it quite a bit and since I do plan to release this world for a download when the build is complete, I have added some signs to help people figure out what is all doing what here. So the green line is to draw a card with that button there. The gray line is to shuffle the deck. Now those two are actually going to be different because they are going to be based on events that happen in the game and not just by walking over here and hitting buttons. So those are temporary, but the mechanics behind them will be the same. Over here then we have the minecart decoupler to split the stack of minecarts up in to a whole line of a single ones and then around the back here is the card injector to ensure that each minecart has exactly one card inside of it so if you guys did enjoy and you want to see the rest of this build go ahead and subscribe for more and i'll see y'all next time